Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to this DevOps on AWS video where we'll work with AWS Code Build. AWS Code Build is a managed continuous integration service which compiles source code, executes tests, and produces deployment ready software packages. So if you have a developer background, think of compiling a Java application into a jar file. If you watched the prior video in this playlist on AWS Code Commit, you'll recall this image which shows where Code Build fits into the code pipeline. So the pipeline starts with the developer writing code, then pushing to Code Commit, and then the code is compiled by Code Build. However, in the prior video, we were working with a Code Commit repo which only had a static HTML file on it. So in this case, there is no code to build. But remember, Code Build is a service which will build and test code. So even though we don't have code to build in our repo, we can still use Code Build to execute a test against the HTML file. And in this case, we'll run a test to see if the HTML file contains the text Cumulus Cycles. Now, to get started, I'll show you that, as in the prior video, I have an IAM user named CC Developer which has access keys and HTTP Git credentials for AWS code commit. I also have an EC2 instance that I'm using as my developer machine, which I've connected to using EC2 instance connect. I also have a code commit repository named CC repo one, which contains an index.html file. Now, to get started with code build, I'll jump into the AWS code build console and create a build project. Give it a name of CC demo build project. Scroll down to the source section. I'll leave the default source provider's code commit and select a repository. Here, the reference type will be branch and the branch will be master. For the environment, I'll use the default of a managed image, which is a Docker container used by code build to execute the build, and then select an operating system of Ubuntu. The runtime will be standard, and the image will be standard 4.0. I'll let code build create a new role for me and move on to the build spec section. Now, the build spec is a YAML file in the root of our projects folder which contains instructions for code build. So let's jump back over to the EC2 instance connect console. Create the buildspec.yaml file and edit it. And here I've added the code for the build spec. Now I've specified the version for the build spec and several phases. The first phase is the install phase, where here I'll just specify a runtime version of Node.js and then a command, which will be written to the logs, indicating that we're starting the install phase. In the pre-build phase, I'll do an echo of starting pre-build phase. And then in the build phase, the commands will be to echo starting build phase and execute test for cumulus cycles in the HTML file. And finally, I'll run the test, which will grep the index.html file for the text cumulus cycles. And if that text exists, the test will be successful. And if it doesn't, the test will fail. Finally, in the post build phase, I'll execute starting post build phase. Now I'll save the file, do a git status. Add the build spec file. Do a git commit and a git push, adding my code commit username and password. Now, if we jump back over to the code commit console, go into our repo. we see we now have two files, the index.html 
and the new build spec file. So now let's jump back over to code build and leave the default for the build spec file. There won't be any artifacts because we're not compiling an application. I'll use the default to write the CloudLodge logs and then I'll create the build project. Now with the project created, I'll go ahead and start the build and we see the build status is in progress. And if we jump into the phase details tab, we see the job was successfully submitted and queued, and now it's in the provisioning stage. And now it's moved to downloading source to grab the code from code commit. And if we scroll down, it looks like our build has failed because when the command executed, it couldn't find cumulus cycles in the index.html file. And that's correct. So if we jump back over to code commit and look at the index.html file, we see that cumulus cycles is nowhere in the code. So let's jump back over to instance connect and edit the index.html file. And I'll just add a div. With the text cumulus cycles. Now I'll go ahead and save the file. I'll add it. commit it and push it to code commit. Now let's just jump back over to code commit, refresh the page. We see our new text. So we'll go over to code build and retry the build. Now it's downloading the updated source. And if we scroll down, we see that our build has succeeded. And the job is complete. All right, now that looks good from a code build perspective when we only have to execute a test. And what we're gonna do now is create a new repository, put some Java code in it and run a code build that will compile the application. Okay, so for this demo, I'm actually gonna work on my local development machine and not use an EC2 instance. So I've gone ahead and run AWS configure to create a local CC developer profile. Now, if we jump over to VS Code, remember this is a Java project. So inside of my root folder, I have a pom.xml file, which we'll look at in a second a build spec YAML, and then a source folder. Inside the source folder, I have a main folder with a Java folder in it and a test folder with a Java folder in it. Looking at the main application, demo app.java, we see it's a simple Java class, which when an instance is instantiated, takes a message and sets the value of the private message variable. It has one method called log message which will write to the console, hello, plus the message, which is passed in when the instance is instantiated. Now, if we look at the test app class, we see that it has a message variable with a value of co-build. Here, it instantiates an instance of the demo app, and then there's a test case named test log message, which sets the message variable equal to hello code build. And then the assertion asserts that the message is equal to the value returned from the demo app's log message method. The pom.xml file specifies an artifact ID of demo app with a version of 1.0, sets the Maven compiler properties to 1.7, and includes a dependency for JUnit. Now, looking at the build spec YAML file, this should look pretty familiar 
it has the same phases, but this time the runtime version is for Java. And in the build command section, we're running a Maven clean install. Finally, there's an artifact section with the files pointing to the target and the demo app 1.0 jar file. Now, jumping back over to the AWS console, you'll see that I cleaned things up a little bit from our last demo. Currently, I have no code commit repositories and no code build projects. So what I'm gonna do is jump back into the terminal and run an AWS code commit create repository command, passing it the repository name of CC demo app repo. Now, if we go back to code commit and refresh, we see our repo. Now I'll go ahead and copy the command to clone it. Now I'll jump back into the terminal and clone the repo. Then I'll copy the files from my demo app folder into the new cloned repo folder. And finally add commit and push them to the remote code commit repo. And now if I go back into the repository, we see our files have been added. So now I'll jump over to code build and build the code build project for our application. I'll start by clicking the create build project button. And this time before I start filling out the build project form, I wanna scroll down to the artifacts section. And this time, because we're compiling a Java application, we're gonna have a jar file as an artifact and we need to put it somewhere. And that place is going to be in an S3 bucket. So for artifact type, I'll click S3 and now I need to specify a bucket name. But currently I don't have any buckets. So what I'm gonna do is jump back into the terminal and I'll run an AWS S3 API list buckets command and as expected, we don't see any buckets. So now I'll run a command to create a bucket named CC demo app output. And I'll add versioning to the bucket. Now, if I run the list buckets command again, we'll see our bucket has been created. So now I'll jump back over to code build and here I'm gonna refresh the page so that next time I'll be able to pick up the bucket name. So I'll give the project a name, scroll down to the source, which will be the code commit repo. I'll select the repository and the main branch. For environment, I'll use a manage image again, and this time I'll pick Amazon Linux 2. The runtime will be standard, and the image will be 4.0. I'll let code build create a service role for me. The build spec is in the repo. And now under artifacts, I'll select S3 and the output bucket. Now I'll scroll to the bottom and create the build project. Now I'll go ahead and start the build which we see status is in progress. Jump into the phase details and we see we're in the provisioning stage. Now it's downloading the source from code commit and running the build. And the build was successful and now complete. So if we jump over to S3 and go into our output bucket into the CC demo app folder, target, we see our jar file. So that concludes this video on working with AWS code build. If you found it interesting, feel free to give it a like. In the next video, we'll look at AWS code deploy. So if you'd like to be notified when I add that video to the playlist, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.